I'm ready to go. Hello, this is Jen Irish here again. Oh, you know, we talk about all sorts of things that are in the, in the spiritual. And I have to ask myself, how much talking do you really need to do? I have found in the last, oh goodness gracious, in the last 10 years, 10 years ago I was a medium. I loved being a medium. I just loved it. It was something that was just resonated with my heart. I loved working with people who had lost somebody, someone they loved, who were grieving deeply. To bring through messages of love from that loved one, it was just to see the healing that was taking place through those messages was just for me the highest of highs. I just... I floated in, in in the cloud of just thank you God, thank you God for giving me this beautiful gift. And then one day I had a, a father and a daughter came. Um, his wife had not long passed over. The night before, a man in his 40s was grieving the death of his or the passing of his best mate. And through the day, his friend that had passed over had me go down to the local pub and get a, a stubby of beer to share with um, his friend. So, like a good little servant, I obeyed and off I went down to the hotel and came back. And, and it was 7 o'clock at night. It was a hot summer's night. And um, my husband, Chris, was sitting outside patiently waiting for me to, to go through the session. And I pulled out the stubby of beer and I said, this is from your friend. And he burst into tears and he said every Friday night we got together and we would go to the pub and have our stubbies of beers. He said, how did you know? And I said, because he told me so. And I was able to go through the session, which was probably about a two-hour session, bringing through messages of love, bringing them through, helping him heal his heart, confirmation of things that I would not have a clue about. He went and sat outside with Chris and I out in our little beautiful area outside, probably for another two hours. I'm fortunate that Chris is just the most oh, gentle, kind, open-hearted, God-loving man that I have ever met. And so he has embraced my world and made it his world. And so we sat down with him, as I said, for about two hours and off he went and I just said to Chris, oh my gosh, you know, why would I want to do anything else in this life? The very next day, as I said, I had a father and a daughter and I tried to connect with his wife and her mother. Nothing. Nothing. Gone. I thought I could fake this. But that's not who I am. I couldn't just make it up just for the sake of it. So I had to tell them, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I'm not connecting. I'll give you a call one day when I'm in a better space maybe and I can connect with your loved one and assist you with your healing. Here I am. Now it's 2014. This was in 2002. Every time I think about my life as a medium, my heart hurts. My tears well, my eyes well up with tears. I miss that work so, so much. And one day I hope that God will tap on my shoulder, switch my switch on and say, here you are my beautiful daughter time to give you your gift back but in the meanwhile that has given me a chance to do other things it's given me a chance to become a celebrant and do the most beautiful weddings sacred sacred weddings sacred funerals I want to share one particular funeral with you my last 10 funerals have been for for people under the age of 55 I'm now 60. I've just turned 60, so I think 55. 
that is so young. Because at 55, I was told that I didn't have long to live and that I could drop dead at any moment. The last three years I've basically spent sleeping, but I just think of myself as sleeping beauty. Just waiting for somebody to come along, kiss me and awaken me. And I know that will happen soon. But in the meanwhile, I've written the most, you know, these my books, my kids' books. And as I said, I've become a celebrant. Now, this particular funeral, the lady that passed over from breast cancer, she was going to a meditation centre, which was in the most beautiful old church. And so they decided to have her funeral in this old church, this meditation centre. The coffin was carried in and placed on the floor. It was a white coffin. I covered the coffin in purple feathers because she told me from the spirit world that she loved feathers. Her family all sat on the floor around her. The church was filled, overflowing with these beautiful spiritual beings that knew her. They all sat on cushions on the floor. At one end of the coffin, where her head is, there was there were a lady and a man playing the crystal bowls and the American drum. At the feet of the coffin, I sat and went through my ceremony, my farewell ceremony. Before it ended, I was guided by God and by spirit to speak to all those who were there, to jump out of my comfort zone and to talk to them from the heart about their loved one who had just passed over. And my message was, do not grieve for the passing of this loved one, but instead take all those things that made her so special. Live those things that you admired in her. Become those things. Remember her for all the good that she had done, for all those special things, all those lives she had touched, and there were many. And instead of, you know, walking away from that ceremony with tears in your eyes, walk out joyful. Walk out happy that you actually met, not only met this lady, but got to know her heart and give thanks to God for her life on earth. After the ceremony, I was bombarded with people who came up and said, wow, we've never been to a funeral service like this. Wow, it was so unusual. Wow, we couldn't believe the words you were saying. And I quietly slipped out of that church and hopped into my car to drive home and I sat in silent prayer and said, Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me those words of wisdom to be able to help that family and all those people to, you never get over your grief, but to be able to approach it in a much, oh, how can I put it, joyful, peaceful way. And I guess if I was still a medium, I wouldn't have ventured forward and done all those extra little things in my life that I've had to do. God knows what's right for us. He knows the perfect timing. Sometimes we don't see it. <laughs> Usually we don't. I know I get frustrated. I say, come on, come on. Hurry up. I'm like a wild horse that just has to be set free. But I've had to learn patience. And often when we're on this journey and we're faced with different pathways to take, 
always trust that you'll be guided into the right pathway. I want to share a story with you. I was guided after the boy died, passed over, who I wrote about in this book, Messages of Love. He guided me to come up to Queensland from Victoria. At the, that time, my children were 17 and 18. And I thought, oh no, I can't leave my children behind, you know. Mother hen with her little chicks. I brought them up basically by myself. But I wasn't one of those mothers that held on to their kids. I, you know, I let them find their own wings and, and you know, learn their own lessons. Anyway, I was guided to come up to Queensland. I knew in my heart it was the right thing I had to do. So a girlfriend invited me to come and stay with her who lived on the Sunshine Coast. And while I was there, this was only uh, two, three months after the boy had passed over. Her partner said, I've got the perfect house for you. My girlfriend, or my friend, is going over to France and she wants someone to look after her house for her. Oh, how much rent does she want? Oh, he said, I'll find out for you. She asked for a particular rent and no, 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 I couldn't afford that. But my boy in spirit said, offer her a certain amount, she'll take it, which she did. I had a beautiful six months in the hinterland until she came home and then I had to find somewhere else to live. I went from place to place to place to place, but none of the keys would go into the doors of the houses until my boy said, go home and go through the yellow pages. There you will find your house. In this house, you will write our love story, a story between me in heaven and you on earth. So he told me where to go, which was a place called Mullaney, way up in the, in the hinterland, in the Sunshine Coast. And I went into the agents and I said, look, I'm looking for a house and I want to write a book and I need to be in the country and away from all the, you know, in the peace and quiet. She said, I've got the perfect home for you. So up we went, 17 kilometres out of town. And we came across a timber cottage style house on five acres. And she said, can you see yourself writing your story in this house? I said, yes, I can. She said, it's yours. So we went back to the office and she brought out the lease for me to sign. And I was absolutely shocked when I saw the owner of the house had the very same name as the boy that I was to write our story about. The very same name. I got into the car and I just laughed. I said, oh, heaven's sakes, you are full of surprises, God. And I realised that if only we listen to our intuition and listen to God's guidance and listen to the guidance of our guardian angel and of our spirit friend, and not only listen to it, but be brave enough to follow that guidance we are always, always taken to the right place. I'll share another little story with you. I was moving up to Cairns. I had a job up there. The manuscript for my book was finished. I was looking for an editor. And I went down to the little shop from where I was living and up on the, sh the shop was a sign, do you need an editor? So I click, quickly wrote it down, the phone number on a piece of paper, hurried home, rang up the, the number. A man answered and I said, look, I've written a story and I'm looking for an editor for my book. It's very unusual, very spiritual. It's about a ghost and myself and our life together. And I said, you know, would you be interested? Could I come and see you? He said, oh, yes, that really sounds interesting and, yes, I would like to come, I would like to see you. When I asked him what his address was, he lived next door, right next door to where I live. 
And so not only did Mark become my editor, he became my very good friend. Then one day I was invited to go down and have um, a cup of coffee with my girlfriend. And Michael, Archangel Michael came to me and he said, Hap, hap, happy new year. You have a new love coming. This was January the 14th, 2001. Oh yes, I thought, as if. You've been saying that for so long now. Anyway, he said, go and have a glass of champagne to celebrate. So my girlfriend Bron and I, off we went and we heard this Irish music coming out of a, an Irish type pub. Now, I'm not one of those people who goes into hotels or pubs. It's just not something my energy doesn't do well in situations like that. But anyway, the music lured us in. To cut a long story short, Chris was on holidays and he was guided to go into that same hotel. Ronnie and I were sitting in a booth and I was channeling. Full on, full on, still working with Michael the Archangel. And when I channel, I have tears come out of my eyes. And a friend of Chris's came over and said, a man would like to meet you. And I turned around and the bar was full of people and I just pointed to him and I said, oh, that man there. And he said, yes. And I said, oh, not really. You know, we're, we're busy here. And he said, oh, please, he really wants to meet you. Unbeknownst to me, Chris had heard a voice that said, see that lady over there, you must go and meet her. So anyway, Chris came and sat next to me and he said, oh, what do you do? And I thought, oh, I'll get rid of him. I said, oh, I talk to dead people. Little did I know that I was the, you know, I was a match that lit the candle. He was fascinated by, you know, what I did. And I said, oh, I've just finished writing a love story between my man in heaven and myself. And he said, oh, do you have a publisher? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, I'm a publisher. I will publish your book for you. So I've never had to go and look for a publisher. I've always had, you know, Chris has been there for me. Doesn't mean it was easy to publish my book. No, it hasn't been. In order to publish our books, sacrifices had to be made. We sold our house. We sold our furniture. We sold our cars. Every little bit of money that we could gather together to publish these books in order to assist another to heal has come out of our very own pockets. But fortunately, Chris's parents came forward and bought us a house to live in, which is the house I'm in now. And so we've never been left, you know, without shelter, without food, without a pillow to put our heads on. And for that, we give gratitude. But when I asked God, why is it that we've had to go through all of this? Why did Chris's mum and dad need to buy this house for us? It was karma. Karmic. We were ending a karmic situation. We were shown a past life where we assisted them. And now it was their turn to assist us. So I was able to look at things in a very different light. Also, there was a time when Chris was out of work. I was suffering very, very badly with Addison's disease. I had broken my ankle so I couldn't go to work. I had my foot in plaster. We were just beside ourselves. We had Christmas was coming. We couldn't buy any presents. We couldn't pay our bills. We didn't have any food hardly in the fridge. So we had to ask our children to assist us for a short period of time. I was shattered. I thought this, this shouldn't be happening. We shouldn't have to be asking our children to be supporting us. And God said to me, would you like to know the lesson? In all of this, you have given so much to your children. You are now teaching them to give back. And your lesson is to learn to receive. And I've noticed that since our children have learnt to give to us, how they've started to give to charities and sponsor. My son went over to Bali 
and there was a girl in a shoe shop and she had no transport so he went and bought her a motorbike so she could help her family travel from place to place. It makes me proud of them and proud of our achievement. And speaking of children, adults, it is time for us now to learn to set an example for the little ones coming forward. These beautiful little souls who are coming forward with so much knowledge. The rainbow children who are just so intuitive. And we, you know, if we don't get our act together and if we don't create a peaceful world for these children, they will not know how to live in our world. My little one, oh, he was two year old grandchild. Saw a photo of himself up on the fridge as a baby. Now he could hardly even speak. And out of his mouth he said, Gemma, before the angels put me in my mummy's tummy, I lived with them, you know. And then the angels said one day, it's time for you to go back now and put me in my mummy's tummy and so now I'm here with you. This was a little boy who hardly knew any words at all. I nearly fell on the floor and I knew that he had been given that message to give to me from the higher beings, the higher power who was channeling through him. So I could see into his heart and into his soul and understand that this little boy comes from a place of the angels. And so as each of my little grand angels are being born, I'm watching them develop and I'm teaching them or trying to teach them to hold on to that spark of spiritual light that's within them and nurture their gifts and not close them down. And when I go around and speak to the people, to many, many I go around and speak to, I ask everybody to come back to being the little children, the little child within, the child that's full of joy and laughter, who's spontaneous, who just is free-spirited. As adults, we've become so serious and so burdened and so full of anger and greed and hate. We've lost the love. Love is so simple. Life is so simple, but we've made it so complicated. Just go to a playground and watch the children play. That's been simple. A simple life. Go back to nature. Watch the animals. Let nature teach us. Let the trees and the flowers teach us to be simple. And I don't mean simple of mind. I mean simple of heart, humble. I think we've lost our way in this world of ours right now. And so that's why I think that this beautiful Doves for Peace, I just envision it. I'm just sitting here quietly now, opening my heart and spreading the light of love of Doves for Peace. This beautiful program that Father Sean has put together. I'm giving it wings so it can fly on the wings of the dove right around our beautiful planet and beyond. The seeds of peace that only you and I can give and spread, but it must come from the heart, the heart of love. So before I finish, I would like to read a channeling.
that I tell through from Jesus the Saviour. My beautiful brother in spirit, my beloved, our beloved, our brother. Dear ones, as the elements of change surround you externally, let this be a reminder of the changes occurring within. Hark the herald, declaring new beginnings for an era of peace and love. Take note of the vibrations which mark this new dawning of awareness. The notes resonate throughout the universe. The seven notes of the seven rays of the seven moons, suns, stars, planets, seven in all. Seven angels are there for you at this time. Call upon them and ask for their help and guidance. Remember from whence you've come. Remember all, dear ones. Open the portal of the soul. Let go of the little mind and expand to the unknowledgeable horizon. Know that wisdom is within you, the very essence of who you are. Reach inside, deep within the ocean of yourself. Acknowledge and accept for its creatures, snares, currents and beauty. Look to nature for all the clues, knowing full well your answers lie there. Dearest ones of light, allow your light to shine for all to see. Don't let a closed heart and fear stand in your way. Be who you are. Always centre yourself in your truth but mostly stay true to yourself. Know thyself, for you are perfect, beautiful and loved. It's the love of oneself that's needed. Once that happens, step back and watch as the beautiful flower blossoms into full bloom and colour. Follow your dreams always. Love yourself as I have loved you. Then, my dear ones, you will walk across the sea of emotions with ease. Don't think that privilege was for me alone. Think. Think of the true meaning of the parables and you will understand. When all around you have lost their faith, keep yours. Become the currents of your mind. Balance and a level head is the key. Learn to control the little mind and you will reach heights unknown. Spread your wings, you eagles of light. Spread them to full capacity. Dare to be different. Dare to fly. And dare to be you. Always yours in love and spirit, your Saviour, Jesus the Christ. One day, before I finish this, one day my loving spirit said to me, Remember this, Jen. There's your truth, there's my truth, and there's the truth. So with that, I'll end this session. May peace and love be always with you. Open your hearts to receive the love of God the love of your fellow man, and most of all, the love of yourself. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You are not alone. We are here for you. Thank you.